हॅलो आय एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादी पाया हॉस्पिटल पी जी इन्स्टिट्यूट अँड ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली इंडिया स्मॉल पीपल इज नॉट अन एक्सक्यूज फॉर कॉम्प्लिकेशन मेनी टाइम्स आय डिस्कस कॉम्प्लिकेशन विथ माय फेलोज और ट्रेनिज अँड युजली द एक्सप्लेनेशन स्टार्ट्स विथ सर द पीपल बिकेम स्मॉल अँड देन आय हॅड डिफिकल्टी विथ कंटिन्युईंग द सर्जरी आय फील एनी केस of small pupil can be easily tackled by everyone so let's see this case 78 year old man with shallow ac small non dilating pupil the patient is on tamsulosin and you can see that the pupil is not dilating so i use intracameral xylocaine followed by i injected diluted adrenaline i generally use diluted adrenaline i don't give the full dose because i feel that after adrenaline patients might have some corneal edema so i generally try to dilute it and it is as effective as full concentration of adrenaline so i injected both the agents but still the pupil was not dilating that well so i tried viscomidriasis using hyalocort and with viscomidriasis with heavy ovd i could uh, dilate the pupil a bit and i thought should i use pupil expander or not so the earlier plan was to use it but now i thought that i can complete the case without pupil expander so i started of doing ccc which i could complete but you can see that the pupil again became small so i was again in dilemma whether i should put it now or i should wait because ccc is already done but the moment i tried to do hydrodissection you could see that the floppy iris tried to come out as the fluid was coming out from the main incision and now i am pressing the posterior lip of the incision so that i can take out some of the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber i am not injecting any fluid inside because if i inject more the more iris will come out and i will just put little bit of hyalocort over the iris so that when i am entering with the phaco probe it should not catch the iris that's it now let's see still I am in dilemma whether uh, I should go ahead with the surgery or I should uh, put a pupil expander in and I again decided to go ahead with the surgery thinking that this much of pupil is enough for my surgery but this is a floppy iris so as soon as I started doing trenching which I am doing well in the central 2 to 3 mm of the nucleus and i tried to divide it which also i could do successfully but still because i have not done hydro dissection this nucleus did not rotate and now i decided no this is the right time to put a pupil expansion ring otherwise if i have any complication in this case then i will be giving explanation to myself that the pupil was small and that should not be an excuse for any complication so here is the b hex ring which goes in the anterior chamber i have already put some ovd over and under the iris and then one of the flange with these holes goes behind the iris and those notches are going to uh, hold the iris at the pupillary margin so the trick here not to engage the ccc is to push it little anteriorly as you can see i push the flange flange little anteriorly so as to avoid the ccc getting into this one of the flanges and for the sub incisional flange i am using the side port we can also use kuglen hook to just retract the iris but i can do it to uni manually also and uh, here goes the flange under the iris and uh, just uh, you know this is my preferred position of b hex where the sub incisional flange is under the iris so during the il placement it is easier i will show it now the small pupil is out of my way there is no excuse for me to now do any complication i will start doing my regular steps of hydro dissection nuclear rotation and i will not go ahead until the nucleus nicely rotates So now I am in my comfort zone. The pupil is now reasonably dilated, and uh, it is not going to come down definitely because of the placement of that B hex pupil expander ring. And uh, the phaco is routine, but because this is a shallow AC, the patient also has some glaucoma, 
patient has floppy iris so i decided to do a slow phaco that means i will reduce the parameters by 30 percent 25 to 30 percent and uh, i'm using standard range and divide technique here this is a, not a very hard cataract just soft grade one to two cataract so nice deep trench and complete division is what all I need and the pupil expander ring is providing me adequate visualization of the nucleus. The depth can be judged very easily. I don't have to worry about the iris getting into phaco probe. And here we start the quadrant removal. The endothelium is well protected using the hylucoat. I don't want to damage endothelium even if the anterior chamber depth is very shallow. So I am going to take all due precautions to keep the endothelium very safe here. Keeping phaco probe right at the center, low phaco dynamics, 25% vacuum reduction is there. So normally I use say 350 vacuum but here I am using just 250 to 280. And as I reach the last piece, I will be reducing the vacuum even further because I don't want to hit the posterior capsule here. And to visualize the posterior capsule, as soon as I approach the last piece, I generally increase my retro illumination. So I, because I want to see the posterior capsule well, I want to know if it is fluctuating, whether it is coming anteriorly. So now in this case you can see that the posterior capsule is pretty much stable, no anterior fluctuations. So I can go ahead, I already reduced the vacuum to around 230 to 250 and here I just trying to take out some of these epinuclear pieces which are stuck in the hylucote and because it is small pupil I decided not to go into periphery and just uh, I will remove it using the cortex aspiration. This is the cortex aspiration, uh, the standard coaxial IA. For small pupil, what I do is I mentally map uh, the entire 360 degree of the bag and I start from one end and uh, try taking out the cortex in one sheet. So I know which areas are fully cleared of cortex I try to keep the vacuum low in the periphery so that I can grab hold of the cortex sheet and then pull it out in toto so there are no tiny tags which remain in the periphery. So that's the end of the cortex aspiration. I am using hyaluronate here for inflating the back because in small pupil it is easier to take it out with uh, cortex aspiration mode because this hyaluronate comes out in one piece and uh, here you can see that the, I want to negotiate the haptic so that they don't you know drag the B hex ring along with it so that is the important of keeping this sub incisional flank under the iris so that it doesn't uh, get uh, you know, stuck with the IOL haptic. And then this is the removal of the B-hex ring which is very easy to do. And now I move on to the visco aspiration. The anterior chamber has to be properly aspirated so that there is no remnant of hyaluronate in the anterior chamber. Otherwise it may cause post-operative inflammation and raise IOP. This patient already is on glaucoma treatment so I don't want any inflammation in the post-op period. The hyaluronate in the back comes out very quickly. And now after removing the B-hex, now the pupil reminds me that it is still small. So this is the end of uh, OVD aspiration. And as I started doing hydration, I realized that there was a chunk of hyaluronic which was still there just besides the incision. So I decided to take it out. You can see that it was still stuck to the endothelium and I don't want to keep it there because it is going to again cause inflammation. That's the end of the procedure, very well done. The intraoperative meiosis was very well tackled by pupil expansion ring and a small pupil should not be an excuse for a complication. Thank you so much.